Hey, check out part one with my podcast still standing up with my special guest, Michael Irby. You got to check this out. We had fun. I'm sure you will, too. Hmm. And we got the action symbol. Michael Irby, my my buddy, my, for the last few years now, we've been buds and golfing together and we hanging out. Up. And you came yeah. to my show. And, yeah. you know, it, uh, and then you've also not golfed with my people that i introduce you to i don't get invited to the force I, I don't know what you're talking about okay uh I, they always say craig's gonna be there i said i'll absolutely be there and then at the last second uh you pull out somebody so you know you and, know you, and you by the way you don't look like a golfer if, if what you, does if, a golfer look like i've I don't been know. told you look like a, a soccer player and i just found out today you used to play professional soccer i, I did not play professional soccer but i did right. play competitive soccer competitive um, well yes. couldn't we all say that uh, not really have you seen have you i competed to against my kids <laughs> but is that really, yeah, is that really yeah, competition yeah you oh, it sure is well, okay yeah. I, I will take them down to win well as you should you are should you that win. type by the way with your kid with your son i did not let my kid win never let him win i did not let him win Wow. It led to some frustration, a few tears, but I do believe he's better because of it. I and agree. He crushes at whatever he does, and I don't know if it's me in his head or himself in his head, because you really, I think you're really only ever competing with yourself. It's, right? a, it's an I, interesting I, I do, theory. I do really believe that you're really only competing with yourself, mm -hmm. and I think hopefully I gave him that. It raises the level. I mean, if you're, and by the way, they know. They know. Instinctually, they know. Yeah. I did it with my first two kids, right. and they both turned out spoiled brats. Soft. And, I, and, I, and, <laughs> and my 14-year-old is right. not, and he's the most coachable, most athletic, yeah. the smartest athlete of all of them. Interesting. And, yes, and so he became the best athlete of all of them, even though he's not built well for it. I mean, right. he's, he's slight of built. Well, your brain can kind of overcome the, the he, mind over the matter. Can it, over, it, I mean, there's so many different But not attitudes. if you're letting him have his way. Like, well, no. Like my, my first son will go, oh, no, you're pinning me. Yeah. Oh no. Oh, an arm wrestling. Oh. oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, yeah. I struggle for a little bit, and I let him think that he won. They know, and they, they know that they, they know the game ball is not really their game ball. Right. But it sucks when they actually do beat you because my kid's twenty one now. That's right. And now he is. I was uh, getting to that. Yeah. yeah. He has gotten a little stronger, and right when I think, and all of a sudden I can't breathe, and I'm like, dude, <laughs> dude, dude, and I'm tapping out because tapping he's got out. me. He's got me in a rear naked, and I'm like, oh my god. And when you tap out with your kid, that's a, that's that's the bro. moment in life. Yeah. It, it really is, and yeah. I it, they're distinctive moments in our lives. For the sure. the first time I raced my son on the beach, mm. and not only did he pass me in a sprint. But the sand just to it just makes it much worse. Yeah. The sand is flying in my eyes. As yeah, I'm yeah. It's a rocky moment. And Apollo Creed is jamming past <laughs> it, and you're like, "Oh my god, he got me!" Oh <laughs> man, and that's it. By the way, yeah. it's not going to be. And I actually had the thought, "I'll train, so next year I'll be." A, but right. It ain't gonna happen. Right. I, it's just once they pass you, it's never gonna be. It's never. It'll gonna be never done. be the same. But that's also kind of exciting, you know. Like yeah. bring it back to golf, watching Tiger and Charlie do their thing. Oh yeah, and it's so beautiful because like Charlie has come. I mean, he's grown up. He's going to grow up right before our eyes, and I can't wait till the kid wins one. And it's just, it's really exciting to watch. I think he might be out driving Tiger a little bit, I've heard, uh, yeah. a couple times, you know. Um, but, yeah, it's it's impressive, man. It's, it's happened think, to LeBron James's son. Yeah, you want your kids he to is. do better than you. I mean, I... Well, I no, 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 you don't. You don't? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, you don't? I, I, no, yeah, uh, you do. Yes, you, you do. do. Yes, and you, you don't. Well, hey. There's the humiliation factor, but then there's the other factor of, oh, I'm so proud of my child because it's not yeah. going to happen for me. Right. I just probably a year ago came to the conclusion that I will not be a professional athlete. Maybe a year, maybe two years. Mm. Well, <laughs> so there's still I, the uh, I, senior tour. I just uh, gave it up. There's still the PGA <laughs> senior, <laughs> the tour. senior tour. You know, uh, you, could, you could pickleball. You could probably go to the Olympics at pickleball over 80s. That's true. That's um, well, thank God for pickleball. I just took it up. Do <laughs> Did you, you? Do you do pickleball? I don't do pickleball. It's yet. supposed to come to our club. We're members of the same club. Yes. That sounded so pretentious yeah and both uh, of us don't come from backgrounds that would be in a club am i right about I, that i never thought i would be a country club guy i grew yeah. up down in palm springs yeah and there's country clubs there's a dime a dozen down there yeah. and the only people that looked like me were kind of keeping the club looking nice you know <laughs> and soccer was my passion and my dream and i didn't i found golf like literally five six years ago and I was there when you found it. Yeah, right. It, it, it didn't find you back right away. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, it's, oh. hey, listen, it's hard. I still the, remember your swing. Hey, it was a little Happy Gilmore. I mean, it was a little short, but I, you know, they said very oh, compact. Yeah, they said, "Oh, this look like John Rahm, this, that, and the other." I yeah. Say, well, I don't know, but uh, when I videotaped it, I thought I was like going all the way. 
No. Couldn't believe it, no, right? It was like right here. Yeah. It was like it a, was a back swing that was not it was it was more of a four swing. It was more <laughs> but the ball went and it went pretty straight. It went and, straight. Yes. But, and, 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 and and it killed some worms. Yes. But I'm, uh, I'm learning. I can I'm, say all these things now because now you are literally the most improved player I've ever seen. Uh, Although Dennis, who introduced us, yes. Dennis Haysburg. Yes. He also is the most improved. You guys have been playing your asses off, and I, with all my friends, right. without inviting me, and I stink now. <laughs> I still stink, and I'm not up to your level now. Well, you better. Yes, you are. You better get out there with us. And yeah. listen, golf. You got to put in the work, like anything, like yeah. this, like like this podcast, standing up, right? Like, like you got to put in the work, and you can't right. have like like the result, right? You can't be about how good I'm going to get, and I'm going to hit this mark, and I'm going to do that, because you will be disappointed. I, I, I guarantee yeah. you, golf Ex- is... Expectations are planned disappointments. You're Straight planning up. your own disappointment. Straight yeah. up. People always have these goals. They put the post-it notes on the mirror and stuff like that. I, yeah. I say, man, that's, that's silly. Stay in the moment yeah. and learn from the moment. And I, I have a thing about ego. I call it evading growth opportunity. Mm. You evade your own growth opportunity if you have this ego of having to win all the time, being in results and being an outcome. Because right. you're going to be disappointed a yeah. lot. Yeah. And then how do you handle that disappointment and things like that? So a lot of things I was talking about earlier is, uh, on this show is I like this show to be like a solution show. Have fun, which is another solution, by the way. Absolutely. Have, 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 the more fun you have, the better life is anyway. Yeah. And the better your score is. Yeah. Because even if you have a lousy score, it's okay because it was fun. That's it. I've had some times, though, when I'm really playing bad. You go, oh, it's just about having fun. I, I did not have any fun losing another ball. <laughs> <laughs> shut up with your fun thing. You yeah, know, one yeah, of yeah. you always tells me to shut up with it. But I, I, I like the, a lot about the turnaround. And you're already starting to get to it, that, that you did not grow up in wealth or around country clubs. You, you, you A little impoverished, a little bit, like lower middle class, you know, middle class. I, I hate we the word were, lower. Yeah, I think we were middle class. You know, I mean, it was the 80s. Um, I, yeah. never, I never – uh, needed for anything, you know. Oh, really? I, yeah, you know, my parents, they took care of business, and, you uh-huh. know, they were, you know, were they struggling? Maybe they were, but I, as a parent and as an adult, you don't you. tell the kids that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you you know, you deal with that. I mean, that's what being an adult is about, right? It was shown to me by peers, though. If the peers have more than you have, and they're bragging and Dude, stuff everyone like that. had more than me. I grew up in Palm Springs, and my parents were actually cleaning houses and washing windows, yeah. and I was hanging out with doctors and lawyers' kids. Like, yeah. Like, so, I... I you know what though? There was so much like richness in our house, mm. I guess. Mm. Um, in that, I guess lack, but I never really felt it, you know. And like my doors were open, um, my friends with money would come to my house, and they had they had just as good a time as anybody else has because it was like a, and not to say that they weren't, but we were like a real family, you know. Yeah, and yeah. we were kind of, you know, we'd sit down at the table, we'd talk, and we'd do it. And I, I don't, I didn't lack anything. I mean, that was more so like you're saying from your peers. You yeah, know, and, and the and peers, sometimes they're spoiled with equipment, but they don't understand. Sometimes they'll come over, and we create things. You you become more creative if you don't have. Like, you, if you just make a call and say, okay, I, I want this new device, yeah. as opposed to we're making two cans and a string. Oh, yeah. We did that the other day at my house. Did you know it actually works? Does it work? I couldn't believe did it. Did you have to yell? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're three feet away. Of course I can hear you. I couldn't believe it actually goes through the string. I didn't think I thought this was a thing I did when I was a kid, but I, my, my daughter did it with me with Dixie cups. How far did you get? We were about probably about seven feet away. A and, small, and a small whisper. And, a small whisper. You could yes. Do it. Really? Right through the fiber optics. Oh, I, I couldn't wow. believe it. But I got more of a kick out of that than, if I, than buying her, which I did. I bought her a new phone. I got much more of a kick out of right. something like that where we're – Using your hands, you're being clever, and yeah. how else are you supposed to invent things? How how are the new inventors going to happen if you just keep handing them everything? Yeah. It's just, you know, or how are you supposed to pass a test if, right. if, if everything's done for you through AI? Right. Uh, you know. I. But anyway, so I want to know something in your life where you hit a point in your life where you went, "Oh boy, this is this is not easy," and you and you turned it around, and I want to know how that turnaround happened. Like I, I know it's yeah. I know it's a daily thing that we have. That it is a daily thing. I mean, I, yeah. I really think that you know you have the opportunity to change your uh, reality every day, every moment, every time you go to sleep, you can wake up with a new intention. Yeah. Um, but you know, a big turning moment for my family and I too, like when we, my wife and I met in New York in acting school, and you know we'd been dating for a while, and then she, uh, I got a movie. She went to L.A. And I was thinking we were just going to go straight back to New York and we were going to go knock it out because I'd started to make some connections. And during that time, we decided to come out to L.A. real quick just to kind of check things out. And then 9-11 happened. 
And oh. so it kind of shut down New York and the whole vibration for me. So we Ooh, decided yeah. to kind of stay here for a few months and just kind of, you know, muscle it out. And I didn't have an agent. I had New York had a chill in the air back then. Oh, I mean, it, was, it was it was it literally yeah. you could feel the fright. The whole yeah, the whole vibration like looking around and changed. Yeah, you know and crazy. You know, like so we were here. I didn't have an agent. I didn't have a manager. I had some movies coming out, but they weren't out yet. And she says, uh, "I say, hey, what's going on with you? You know, I'm supposed to go meet this manager." And she said, "Oh, nothing. You just go do your thing." And I, I said, "Babe, what's going on?" Mm. She says, "I'm pregnant." I'm 29 years old. Mm. Nothing. We had like $500 between the two of us. Mm. I said, oh, what are we going to do? And she goes, I don't know what you're going to do, but I know what I'm going to do. And I said, ah, game changer. Mm. Game changer. So mm. I went, I met this manager. I was there for two minutes. I said, listen, bro, no time to bullshit. I got one in the oven. I need a manager. I need someone to represent me here in LA. And that was kind of, I turned into a lion at that moment. Like, wow. Right. Turned into a lion. In that moment. Yeah. And yeah. Based on need. And that's yes. the thing is what, survival. A lot of Based times we're survive. not faced with survival. No. And that's what you become is you become this lion. Yeah. And I think that we're we're just tamed too much these days. No, so we're speaking moving of so lion, far away from that. I you mean, know, I can't imagine lions behaving like us. You know, what'd yeah. you what'd you drag into the cave over here? Yeah. Clean that up. Yeah. It's all bloody. You yeah. know. Is that a mocha chocolate? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? What the hell? <laughs> you know, and that was that was uh, becoming a father or accepting yeah. going to be a father yeah. was such a moment for me. And there was a gentleman I was working with in New York, and he said that babies bring their own bread. And I said, what, what are you talking about? He said, it's an old Jewish, you know, ideology that a baby will bring his own bread. Yeah. And I said, oh fascinating and literally brother like show show movie show mm. and it was just all of this stuff started to happen because i walked in and i was ready and i was hungry and it wasn't out of desperation it was mm. out of I, I i know my purpose now when it's out of desperation it doesn't happen no they smell it they smell it's it. like blood you know have you ever I mean? been on the other side of a casting? Like when you cast someone else, have you ever done that? Have you ever uh, been a producer or casting? I, or? I have sat on the other side of the table. You have. before, yeah, as a it's, reader. As isn't a, it amazing how you can see the second yeah. they walk in? Yeah, yeah, you get it. No, man, I've had my moments. I've you had, see your uh, lions, yeah, and you see the and desperation, see, yeah, you and know. you see the lambs out there, the and you see yeah. the guys got big eyes, and they hope this is the one. This and, is the one, yeah. you know. Um, no, I had, you know, we. I've had so many turnarounds in this career, too. You know, you think you've made it, and you're on a mm. show for five years, and all of a sudden the phone stops ringing, and you're like, wow, I can't buy a meeting right now. Mm. And there was a little time, you know, a couple pilot seasons where I'd walk in, and I was trying to save the house and pay the mortgage, and I was trying to take care of all these things, and they just smelled it, and mm. it didn't work. And I ended up having to sell my home. And It's amazing. It it's like, the universe, really. Bro, it's, it's not Hollywood. The, that's, no. that's what I want everybody to understand. Yeah. It's a, this isn't about a Hollywood discussion. This no, is no, about no. everyone yes. using these techniques of yes. turnaround. Yes. You turn around by starting with your vibration and your yes. frequency that you're putting out there. Yeah. And if it does come from a place of need, people, people are afraid of needing this. Yeah. 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 That brings fear in them. They want you to be confident. I've been on the other side of, you know, I've cast movies and things. I've produced movies. I want, I, I, want, I want them to be present with me, mm -hmm. to be of service to the project, not to themselves and to their own needs. Right. Be of service to the whole. Right. You walk in with that. I just hired a kid, actually. Oh, my God. He just brings it. Yeah. You know, he just brings this enthusiasm, this, this childlike enthusiasm where he's saying, hey, I'm, I'm a part of this. Right. I, I will, and you will all mutually benefit from it. You become yeah. a team. That's how, and, you, and yeah. that's and exactly what you're saying. Yeah. Because after that part of the process, instead of needing stuff, I said, oh, I got to go back to w w when I got into the business and why I got into the business because I felt like I had something to offer. And instead of having to take anything from it, I felt like, let me just go and give Mike Lurby to the process. And it started to flow. And everyone says, that's the guy we were waiting for. Mm -hmm. um, the scared one, the nervous one, the one that was insecure and hopeful, you know, uh, a little desperate, you know. Yeah. Um, you don't want that guy on set. I get it. Yeah. I get it. Leave that at home, you know. Right. Um, and if you're able to really harness that, uh, whether it's on the golf course or in life or in anything, if you're able to just shut that down, be absolutely present in the moment, 
and know what it is that you have to offer, it doesn't matter what happens, mm -hmm. right? Even if you don't get it, you right. know that you can walk away and that you did everything that you yeah. needed to do. And like, that's auditions. That's, 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 it's, it's, you might any, not be right for some other reason. That's okay. It, it's it's, not, it's okay. got nothing and to do it, with it. And it wasn't meant to be yours. And, and it wasn't meant to be. I used to have yeah. this big resentment. I walk in at you know, nepotism. <laughs> right. I, I hated nepotism. Right. I could name, you know, I, I had all these, I'd say, you know, that's Jackie Gleason's grandson. No wonder he's Jason Patrick. I remember at the time, right. you know, I, I lost to a Baldwin brother. I think it was Zeppo Baldwin. You know, I was like, right. I had all these resentments and this guy just turns to me and goes, it wasn't meant to be your part. Right. Was it, it was meant to be theirs, yeah. and it doesn't matter how they got there. Right. That was meant to be theirs, and you're meant to have your destiny, whatever yeah. it is, and stay present to it. Yes, you know, be available to it for sure. And it's the same way with dating. It's the same way with relationships. As soon as you get desperate, mm -hmm. people feel it and they respond to it energetically. Yeah. Why well, sure I had a good time? How about you? <laughs> I had a blast. Is that, is, that, is that what an outro is? It wasn't your virgin experience, but it was the second the time. The second time is always a little better than the first. The first <laughs> one's that you're like, you don't know where you're at. The second one's you to kind of, you know, you know your way around things a little bit. Well, thanks for being here. Michael Irby, Craig Shoemaker still standing up. And make sure you check us both out on Instagram, Michael Irby, and I'm official Craig Shoemaker. And we'll see you next time on Still Standing Up.